Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In continuation with the gastrointestinal pathology series for undergraduate students, the topic which I am going to discuss today is to differentiate between tubercular and typhoid ulcers. So basically we will try to enumerate the differences between tubercular and typhoid ulcers of the gastrointestinal tract. Now before we understand these two things, let us see what ulcer means. Ulcer basically is a breach in the continuity of the epithelium and the epithelium can either be skin or mucous membrane. So we are dealing with the gastrointestinal tract epithelium which is basically a mucous membrane. See the ulcers in the gastrointestinal tract are uh, categorized into uh, various subtypes which could be peptic ulcers which we have discussed earlier, right? Gastric and duodenal. It could be because of infections and infections can be due to bacterial, viral or parasitic. It could be inflammatory. Uh, basically, they are immune mediated. That's, that's non-infectious. So, this is all, these are also uh, discussed, right? The ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. I have discussed these in detail. And it could be neoplastic ulcers, predominantly the malignant ulcers. Now, let's concentrate on the infections part, okay? So, the infections can be a bacterial infection can be parasitic infections and can be viral infections which can lead to ulcers in the gastrointestinal tract. The most common viral infection implicated in ulcers are the cytomegalovirus. The parasitic infection, the most common example is the amoebic ulcers caused by Entamoeba histolytica and the bacterial ulcers can be uh, because of typhoid, can be because of tuberculosis, can be due to H. pylori which we have discussed in great detail and can also be due to Clostridium difficult. So in today's no session, let's see the uh, features or differences between the typhoid and tubercular ulcer of gastrointestinal tract, right? Now, so the causative organism of tubercular ulcer is Mycobacterium tuberculosis which is an acid fast bacteria whereas the causative organism of typhoid ulcers is salmonella typhi which is a gram negative bacteria now coming to the distribution of ulcers the tubercular ulcers are more commonly located in ileocecal region okay they are more commonly located in ileocecal region sometimes you know very rarely other parts of the gastrointestinal tract can also be involved like in the case of colon purely colonic involvement it can be gastric involvement etc Whereas typhoid ulcers, most often the typhoid ulcers are uh, seen in the small intestine. Of course, it can be uh, seen in large intestine. In small intestine, terminal ileum is the most common location. As I told you, it can be seen in the jejunum or also very rarely in the colon. Okay, So they are most often seen in the small intestine, particularly terminal ileum. How, do, uh, how does these uh, uh, um, infections or how does these ulcers result? The basically, you know, the spread of tuberculosis leading to ulcer formation is via the hematogenous spread, particularly tubercular ulcers, you know, the, it's via hematogenous spread by ingestion of infected sputum or it can be direct spread from infected contagious lymph nodes and fallopian tubes. That's how you know tubercular ulcer is formed. Whereas typhoid ulcers is spread by usually by poor sanitation and poor hygiene. Basically, it's a fecal oral route of transmission. You must have heard about Typhoid Mary, right? Typhoid Mary uh, um, was an American cook, you know, who was believed to have infected hundreds of people with typhoid fever. And surprising to note that basically she was an asymptomatic carrier. Now, moving on to the clinical features of uh, tubercular and typhoid ulcers. Fever, usually in tuberculosis, the fever is low-grade fever and they, are, they often, you know, present with uh, weight loss. Whereas in typhoid ulcer, the fever classically is a step ladder type of fever. These patients will have chills along with fever. Now, diarrhea or constipation. Chronic diarrhea is a feature of tubercular ulcer. Sometimes, you know, you have features of obstruction. Whereas in the case of typhoid ulcers, diarrhea is rare, whereas constipation is more common than diarrhea. Abdominal pain is usually long-standing in case of tubercular ulcer. Sometimes it can be colicky, whereas more common, you know, abdominal pain is the most common presentation in typhoid ulcers. It may be sudden in onset. 
especially when there is perforation abdominal mass is not an usual presentation in either of these ulcers but tubercular ulcers can sometimes you know present as abdominal mass particularly you know the hypertrophic or ulcero hypertrophic variant of tuberculosis where they can manifest with abdominal mass whereas that's unlikely in case of typhoid ulcers ascites is more common in tubercular ulcers of the gastrointestinal tract unlikely in the case of typhoid ulcers now moving on to the macroscopic features or macroscopic differences between typhoid and tubercular ulcer now coming to the ulcer arrangement of tubercular ulcer they are usually situated in transverse axis of the intestine that is the longest diameter of the ulcer is perpendicular to the long axis of the gut whereas in typhoid ulcers the ulcers are usually arranged in the longitudinal axis which means the longest diameter of the ulcer they run parallel to the long axis of the gut okay so how, why are tubercular ulcers transverse and why are typhoid ulcers longitudinal the explanation is tubercular ulcer you know it's related to the direction in which the lymphatic vessels run in the wall of the ileum and through these lymphatics you know the infection tends to spread and that's the reason why the tubercular ulcers are transverse in arrangement whereas typhoid ulcers the organism accumulates in the lymphoid tissue in pears patches and the resultant infection you know the pears patches became inflamed the mucosa above the pears patches becomes inflamed and then finally they will be ulcerated so that's how these are longitudinal ulcers to come to the size and margins of ulcers the tubercular ulcers are large they are often irregular and sometimes you know they can involve the entire circumference of the small intestine whereas typhoid ulcers are small variable can be multiple they are often regular or regular and ovoid in shape the base of the ulcers are you know you can find you know creamy uh, whitish material if there is evidence of caseous necrosis whereas in the case of typhoid ulcers that's because of you know mucosal sloughing you can find blackish discoloration at the base of the ulcer the tubercular ulcers are often uh, superficial and shallow whereas typhoid ulcers can be superficial and deep the serosal surface in case of tuberculosis you no know, they often show tubercles you no know, these are basically tiny nodules seen on the serosal aspects these are known as tubercles but there's no such thing you see in typhoid ulcers usually it is smooth unless and until there is perforation you can you find evidence of perforation if it is a perforated ulcer now moving on to the microscopic features now what is the type of inflammation tuberculosis being a chronic inflammatory disease chronic granulomatous disease you find inflammation being chronic whereas typhoid ulcers the inflammation is non specific often acute inflammation is present granulomas as we know as we understand tuberculosis granulomas are present in tuberculosis you don't find granulomas in typhoid yes of course sometimes you know aggregates of these can be referred to as typhoid granulomas but then they are not epithelioid cell classical granulomas where in tuberculosis you find this you know these are collections of modified macrophages with our epithelioid cells you find langans jain cell you find you know amorphous eosinophilic granular diabetic material which is which is nothing but the caseous material and these granulomas are often surrounded by the lymphocytes that's a very classical caseating granuloma in tuberculosis now another important feature we need to uh, learn here is erythrophagocytosis which is found in typhoid ulcers now what is this erythrophagocytosis it means basically the macrophages engulfing the erythrocytes can you see these are macrophages and within the macrophages you find these rbcs this is erythrophagocytosis and these cells are referred to as typhoid cells okay now let's that's because you know the salmonella typhi you know the they survive intracellularly within the macrophages and it is these bacilli they stimulate macrophages to engulf erythrocytes that's why it is referred to as typhoid cells no such feature you found you find in tubercular ulcers
Now let's look into the complications of uh, these two. Bleeding is very common in typhoid ulcers. That's because of erosion of adjacent vessels. You know, sometimes the bleeding is so much that it warrants blood transfusion. Whereas bleeding is uncommon in tubercular ulcers. Perforation is again more common in typhoid ulcers and it is the most serious complication of typhoid fever. Okay, very uncommon in tubercular ulcers. But what is common in tubercular ulcer is the stitcher formation. Stitcher formation is present in the long-standing tubercular ulcers, particularly in the stage of healing because of fibrosis. You find stitcher formation and this is often uh, the cause of obstruction in tubercular ulcers. Whereas typhoid ulcers, you don't find stitchers because the ulcers are longitudinal ulcers and they often heal without evidence of fibrosis. So there is no stitcher formation in typhoid ulcers. Now, how do you treat these two? Of course, tubercular ulcers are treated with anti-tubercular drugs, whereas typhoid ulcers are treated with very simple antibiotics. And um, if there is complication, for example, stitchers or obstruction, that is when there is a need of surgical intervention. Similarly, even in typhoid ulcers, if there is bleeding or perforation, then there will be surgical intervention. So that's all about the differences between tubercular and typhoid ulcers. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you have liked the video, please hit the like button. Do comment. Don't forget to subscribe and do share if you find this video useful. See you again with another interesting topic next week. Bye-bye.